So we'll start here and we'll start with food aggression first. So they, food and toys are the ideal way for a puppy or dog to dominate their household and give them things to really power play. So in wild, food is a main source, right? of doing dominance. Head dog always eats first, then female, and everybody waits. You, they come in, they get nailed, they will get beat downs if they disrespect king and queen. Right? This is how dog works. So head dog is always keeping things in check and physically, not bluffing, not hey, no, it's mine, uh-uh, hey right no such thing so we have lost touch as humans right with true dog we really have lost you know <laughs> any reality when it comes to dogs and living with them and people are so surprised by such a good dog and all of a sudden he's turned into a psycho and in certain situations other than that they're great very loving, affectionate dogs, right? But all of a sudden, they just start pulling things off that they can intimidate the owners and keep them in check, right? Showing what really happens and how the dog is seeing the owners. These are the ways when you look at this, you know how the dog really feels about you. Not when he's licking you, not when he's not trying to possess things you are seeing a false behavior, right? When you live with these kind of dogs and they're gappy go lucky and they lick you and they're very good until they want something or care about something. Like food, bones, toys, and then the dogs just start using those things to intimidate the family and the owners, to put them in their place and let them understand that even though we're having niceness and we're loving most of the time, that I run this show and just keep yourself in check, right? You go near my food or my toys, I'll hurt you. But other than that, we're good, right? Love you all, right? So this is how the game is played and people are so surprised in all types of aggression that you see this Jekyll Hyde behavior, but it is coming from weakness of the household and the dog now using something against the household to show them its power. That is the truth of how your dog feels about you. Not when they're a lovey state, not when they're not in that state, because they are carrying the whole day and how they feel about you, right? In that way, it just comes out when they wanna show you the way they feel about this and re for real and then start becoming food aggressive, toy aggressive to teach you a lesson and show you that they will check you and if you keep pushing, they will hurt you to keep themselves in a top place in the household and show dominance. Okay, so now that's how that works and now I'm going to show you here the American Bulldog, the Dachshund, of my cases, right, those two cases were mine, of food aggression, and I mean serious food aggression, like these two particular cases, it does not get worse than these two cases. You will never see two worse cases in the world, in any trainer's life, than these two dogs, okay? So, the American Bulldog, right, <laughs> that I'm gonna show you here. 
This guy came to us as well with the little dachshund here. Same time. Same problem. It just happened to be exactly the same type of aggression. So, the American Bulldog, <laughs> being a big boy, powerful, right? This is dangerous, dangerous territory, right? These guys are... I used to breed American Bulldogs. They are tough as nails when they're in aggression state. Tough period. And the owners, we had to go pick this dog up because they could not even grab him anymore to take him to us outside. He has been dominating his household and it all been revolving around food aggression, mainly. toy aggression to a degree, bones. So, now the owner's telling me when I got to the house to pick him up that this would be one of the most dangerous cases that I have ever taken on, that if they put food down, they gotta slide it across the house, run and get into a bedroom and close the door. Because if you are in the room anywhere when he is eating, he will shoot from the bowl like lightning, jump furniture, and he will pursue you like a wild tiger lion that is going to maul you for being even anywhere in the room that he is eating. So, the male owner, the man, already got the wrath of that twice and was in the hospital. So, he is terrified of this dog and just doesn't even want the dog in the house right now because the dog has gotten to him and it started to get so bad that it wasn't about food anymore or, to or, or bones or toys. If he was sitting in the room anywhere, the dog would just look at him from across the room and shoot and go to attack him just for him being around. So they had to keep him in a crate for now one after the last attack, right? Because now the dog is hunting the owners and for no reason. Why? Because he started it with food. He felt weakness within this, this couple. He was fine. And all of a sudden, one day, it just started kicking in. He started trying himself. And like most cases, it starts off soft, bluffing, like trying to see how much intimidation. When the back off, because with these kind of guys, you better be afraid. And then it became attacks. And then, then he learned from attacks that everybody was afraid. He could back them off. And then it rolled into serious, serious aggression where if you cannot escape, he will kill you. These are not just bites. He comes with intention. And it starts while he's eating in, in the beginning. But again, now the owner can't even sit out in the room and watch TV while he eats across the room. He will run direct for him and try to maul him if he's anywhere in the room while he's eating. So I had to get him, bring him to my facility, because most of the time also we don't really want to do this at our place. We want to do this with the owners in the house that it's coming from. So we can clear this up very quickly and turn the game around. So here you're going to see how I go about handling this. Okay, because you're going to see here we had the food down crate or in the room okay the moment that we go and we go to try to touch it's a, a, a frantic aggression
Now, let me just also say, with the suit on, I'm going to get to this in a second, why we do these things. When we go do this, and he bites, even in a little bit where it's this, right, that doesn't seem like much, if you didn't have something covering your flesh, even with these little kind of bites he's doing, All right. you're going to the hospital. Okay? So people don't realize your skin and tissue was not meant to be bitten. <laughs> dog is meant to be bitten by other dog. So they can take good corrections without punctures generally, unless it's severe aggression, right? That it's okay, they take the correction bites, they're okay, it's not damage. Us as humans, we're not meant for physical like that, and the slightest little teeth thing we rip open, it, it can be severe with just a tiny little connection, okay? This does not have to be severe, so. Now, this is where the suit plays a major role and why in my system that I get things done so fast, okay, and permanently. So, taking this here. The suit purpose, one, of course, not to be damaged when we do this, right? Two, the suit, because the dog doesn't know what the suit is, right? The dogs that we're doing this with are not protection trained. They've never seen a suit in their lives. So they don't know what it is. They're still gonna bite you in it, right? Because they don't know what, it could be a sweater. They don't, they don't have any idea what a suit is. So when we go and we go anywhere near the food, we know attacks are coming. But the key to this is you cannot fight back. You cannot have a reaction. You can't go like this at all to avoid a strike. It has to be complete stillness when the dog goes and does it like it did not affect you. The dog is getting no reaction from his aggression, right? So what happens now is we get a very calm state of mind when the dog is in his aggressive, territorial, possessive mode, all right? This is the key, okay? So when we do that reaching and they go bite, we let them. All right. We don't go, no, hey, uh-uh, jerk with a chain or a prong collar, right? Showing conflict makes things worse a lot of times. It's, it does not help the process, right? I've, I've, years back, I've done all the methods I know. So the best way for this to resolve itself very quickly is to go and let the dog do it and not have a reaction so there's no animosity, no conflict between us and the dog when he does this. And that keeps the dog in a peaceful state of mind because if you react back and you try to dominate and, and fight the dog, you set the dog into chaos and fight mode. Now, a perfect example of this was while I was working with Capone and the Dachshund, at the same time, that same day, Caesar happened to be on TV and got his worst bite ever, they call it, by that yellow lab for doing food aggression. This is one of the things I have always said not to do for this reason because I learned a long time before Caesar ever got a TV show what not to do, <laughs> right? Learning my lesson way before Caesar ever came on the scene. So it just happened that that day when we were finishing up Capone and the docks in here, 
for the first day of their aggression. An hour later, after I finished, that episode happened to air live of Caesar challenging that lab on TV for the food. Right, and dominating him and waiting for the lab, right, and then went after the lab physically and the lab checked him and didn't fall for that and then grabbed onto Caesar and said, what, you want to fight? Because when you go dominate dogs who have very high food aggression, they're used to getting their way with this. They become very aggressive. Now it becomes primal, right? So when you go and check them like you're dominant, and they've been getting their way with this and scaring people, they are not going to back off the fight generally that easy if it's real food, if it's real aggression. If it's wussy stuff, and it's a little aggression here and there, a dog will back off. They don't have the guts for it. They really didn't mean it. They've been bluff aggressing. It's not real food aggression. But this yellow lab had real food aggression. And when Caesar challenged, the dog grabbed the hand, bit him good, held on, shook. Right? Caesar was kicking it and all that. And the dog stayed there from the kicking and the trying to get it off until uh, that. Come on. You want more? So the lab sat there waiting for Caesar to make another move. Like, if you come and try to dominate me, I'm going to get that hand again. I'm not going to back off that easy. I will not let you push me around like that as a bully. Okay? And he ended up going to the hospital. Okay? Because it was that severe. This is why I wear jackets and learned my lesson a long time ago don't have conflict with dogs in aggressive state of minds. And then we'll get things done very quickly. Okay? So, there when the dog grabs with the suits and we don't react, they give it your, their best shots, right? And they realize that as much as they've been nailing you with their best shots, you haven't gone away. But you're not pressing and trying to fight them and intimidate them and trying to because then you'll set them off again and they'll try to bite the suits and it'll be ah on and it'll just be this conflict so in passive state we let them do what they want to do because you're not going to get hurt in the suit with a dog who doesn't know how to bite right and then they just start to let go now at the same time when they are biting us in the suit we are correcting them with an e-collar because the e-collar is the gentlest, most communicative, immediate way without conflict between us and the dog. This is what people don't understand about the beauty of the e-collar. Right? So when they go do that, and that's not going, hey, no, uh -uh, I'm trying to retaliate, and they're biting, we touch with e-collar and they feel that their behavior, their aggressive state of mind is being corrected by the universe for that aggressive possessive state without conflict and without it being personal to the person they're attacking. Okay? This is very important for the world to understand. When you do this, the reason for that method is because then it doesn't matter who's around, even children, the dog will not show aggression to anybody because they don't think it was personal to the person that they were biting at the food who was there working with them. Right? It works like a charm. 20 years, I've done it thousands of times, and it works within a day or two, and we're cleared for life. Get a... 
Now, we're gonna do ham. You ready? Come on. Here, bud. Yeah. Go ahead. eating ham off my foot without taking my toes off. Days ago, no toes. <laughs> and he goes back, perfect, I can be here. without danger, okay? So, once we get that, we're good. They learn that we can be there. I'm not harassing, I'm not trying to take your food and leave it, and leave it, and leave it. I don't care, right? I care, I put the bowl down and I let you go eat. And for reality, in life, in any household. We really just want to be able to walk around the dog when it's eating. I can touch him, I make sure that I can always touch them with no aggression, no growling, no state of mind of locking up and stillness, that they're in peace, eating comfortably without threat. They know never to attack and never try that they will not get away with it. But it was never personal from the trainer to the dog because if we do that like every trainer in the world does, it takes a long time to clear. We make weirdness, the eating, the trainer, the dog starts to go away if it's a lot of correcting and you really get to the dog if you can, right? So. Things will take a long time. It'll be unpredictable if it's not done exactly this way. And I've seen it time and time again. Okay, in my career, I've taken over from every method and everything you can think of, right? And this is exactly why I do what I do with perfectness, right? It just goes like a charm in one class. Right, I'm gonna get usually in one class the worst of dogs, Capone and the Dachshund. Okay, that we're gonna get over this. And these owners did not want them home until they were completely fixed because they're so dangerous. All right, so having that no conflict and calmness and steadiness and no retaliation back and no fighting, right, to not stress the dog out from the conflict. We want them to go eat with ease while we're still there and being able to touch. He was really hurting people. Got you good? Yeah. That's what it feels like then, huh? Around the food and nobody would try to feed him in a crate for the fear that he was gonna savagely attack you. But now, hot dogs, everything else that he really wants. I sit here, we couldn't even be in the perimeter before. Good boy, good boy. And just let them know, you're not getting corrected for eating 
And it's not overcorrections because if we overcorrect, the dog will leave the food bowl and won't come back and think that eating now in that area or at the bowl is no good. Or when a human presence comes in, if we hit too hard, we get a dog who flees. Every time a human walks anywhere near, they'll flee if they've been hit too hard. So yes, you can stuff the behavior. It's not cured, okay? So running away is not cured. That's still having a dog in an antsy, anxious, afraid from the hits when they run away. And that's dangerous too, because that still means that they're anxious, not sure, and when they get in there, if anybody does anything or a child does something in the wrong way, they might rah and go lash out. So we want this to be not personal to any trainer or any human. Calmness always in passive, relaxed corrections. No hostility. So the dog can eat in peace, never afraid that we come up and touch and stand next to. They just keep eating peacefully. The corrections were just perfect, beautiful, timed, not overcorrection, right? Because dog corrects dog with violence. We're doing this in a much gentler way of correction so that the dog is at peace when eating. We're just getting rid of the aggressive nonsense. That they're not going to get away with aggression. It's not going to work for them anymore. They might as well give it up. And we are telling the dog, no way, no how are we accepting you bullying the household and putting people in the hospital, right? You are not allowed to get dominant with your pack members anymore. You don't lead this place, okay? It's very important that we clear that state of mind up that aggression will not work for the dog anymore. But again, we're balancing it in a way where we're not bullying them and we're overcorrecting and punishing Okay, because then you would never get them comfortably there to eat while we're petting. They would not just sit there and eat in peace if it was done improperly. Right? Properly, we get just like you're seeing there with Capone. Petting him, he's at the food bowl now, I have no jacket on, I'm not worried anymore, he's going to bite me. Right? And this was all done in one day. Okay? Now, here it took, I gave it two days. So we filmed it two days later without the jacket and I'm putting the ham in there, extra goodies to make sure he doesn't get volatile and hostile over higher level food when it's put in there. And this was two days later from day one. We got what we wanted in day one. I took one day and then I had us film that day with the ham so it was very quick. It just took a total of one day to get it there, two days to just make sure it maintained and that we're good, no more aggression, hostility. And then I kept them a few more days to make sure that there was no pissiness when dogs came around or human, any human that would walk around because I had all staff at the time that would walk around. So we would have everybody come by and walk next to his bowl and get next to him and do all those things to test him to make sure that he wasn't gonna do it to anybody, right? That it wasn't just me who was working with him. He didn't even try to anybody else after I did this with him. So he went home, right, two days after filming that last thing. So in total, four or five days, we're good to go. All right? And same thing with Doxon. Here, instead, we used the sleeve instead of the suit around the food, and nobody would try to feed him in a crate for the fear that he was going to savagely attack you. But same thing with him, he, you could not be in the room. So the owners would keep, put him in a crate, open the crate, throw the bowl in there and close the crate because he'd come right after you. And if he was out in the room and you put the food bowl out, he'll just run at you. And he, if you're anywhere in the room, he would just run and bite you and just keep on, I mean like savagely. So the owners were thinking they didn't want him back ever unless we could kick this because he had the household in terror. 
So sleeve instead, we do our corrections, not over correction to make him understand the same process, right? And then you see the end, petting him by the bowl. I'm allowed to kneel there with him, touch the food, do all that, okay? And he went home and he was great. Both went home, fantastic, fantastic, right? Now, here is the difference between methods, okay? Caesar ended up keeping that lab forever. He never let the lab go back home. And that was because of the method and the way it was being done. So it was take too long. I remember at the end of the episode that it was months later that the owners come visit to see if the dog was okay now. And when Caesar went to stick a rubber arm, the dog was still scared and he ran away from the bowl, but it was still like, ah. And he was telling him, you see, still not there, got a while to go. And then eventually he told the owners, forget it, the dog has to stay with me, he's not safe to go. Okay, but this is the difference in method. In my system, I don't have that. There's no such thing as a dog is way too, because this is as aggressive as it gets, right? This American Bulldog is just as aggressive as the lab, but worse, different breed type, right? A lab to an American Bulldog in aggression is a big difference, right? And the way they were showing themselves, the American Bulldog is way more hostile than that lab that bit Caesar on TV, right? We're talking about a whole different level of aggression than that dog. And we got that dog done in one, two days. And went home beautifully, right? Six months later, owner's calling, nope, he's great, no more aggression, no more, we can be in the room, we can be next to him, we can touch him, right? The system works. Proven works. Both go home, okay? Perfect. It's about how you create the method and understand the psychology. Now, I'm going to show you something here, right? And these things, when I watch these things, <laughs> mm. it's hard to hear for me. It's hard to watch because I know better. And this kid, he's young. He's new, I guess, on the scene. And, you know, people have been showing me things of his, and I start watching, and these are the kind of things that make me cringe, right? Now, let's stick here to the same subject. He's working with a lab here. The lab is not the aggression, near the aggression of the American Bulldog I was working with, or the Dachshund even. Not even in the vicinity. Way different, much lower level, okay? So you would not even think this lab was aggressive that he's working with. Now, there's many things to this. And this, these are red flags to me because I've done this so long, knowing that that route is going to get somebody hurt, okay? It doesn't have a fix on this kind of method. You have to put it on maintenance, and I'm going to explain all this in a minute, I'm just setting this up for you. So you're going to see him here sitting on the floor and jerking the dog with a prong collar, right? Leave it. Leave it. Okay. Leave it. Okay. Lit, right? So now we're getting a little bit more depth. Okay? Good. Okay, now watch when I say that word. He's got to stop. Leave it. Yes. Okay, so fine, you want to control the dog when he eats it, tell him yes, no, leave it, fine. But this does not work as a whole, okay? And exactly going against everything that I was just telling you, how I go about this, it's done in the opposite way. 
and this causes a non-fix. This also causes damage if this is not monitored well going forward in that household with those owners. Right? I have seen this time and time again with these types of methods. They don't hold. And it's not really there. It's not they don't hold. It's not been done right from the beginning. The psychology is not there. Right? Even though the kid talks a good game, but if you know anything about this, none of what he's saying applies to this whole game. It does, has the, what he's trying to give you here makes no sense if you understand dog aggression. Thing and eat. Leave a thing and okay. Leave a thing and okay is fine, but it's not going to get you the result. Okay? Now, another thing is you never send a dog to its bed. So it makes sense to the public who does not under really understand aggression or has dealt with aggression. So things like these things they're watching tend to look okay to people. And that makes sense, right? That makes sense. But it really doesn't if you really understand the depth of this. So what he's saying here is if he drops steak on the floor, and God forbid children are around or anything like that, send them to a bed. So instead of fixing the aggression that they would never get aggressive with children if food dropped, we're sending them to a bed to make sure that, they're safe, that the dog holds his bed and gets away from the situation, right? So that we don't get somebody attacked. Obviously, we don't want anybody attacked or children or anything, but... This is why I say, if you are thinking about this realistically, I've been in a million homes in my life at people's homes. That's really where I've done my career. I know when I go into this kind of situation, what's going to happen in real life. I'm ready for it. So I'm wrapping the method around this. The owner is not going to be prepared all the time. Neither are the children. Stuff is going to fall off counters by accident. Children are going to drop things by accident as they're moving. Happens. And nobody is around to know or say leave it that there's something on the floor the dog just went and went to go get. And if a child walks by when there's nobody there to say leave it or go to your bed to redirect them from the aggression somebody's getting bitten, okay? So, already knowing this and understanding the game well, I'm gonna take all things of the household and make them solid so nobody gets bit by accident or <laughs> damaged for any reason because they were not ready for it. Because in the system he's trying to give to you, you have to be aware all the time of what's out and what fell on the floor somewhere, like you are going to be aware 24 hours a day of what fell on the floor at any moment in time in your house. And I've seen it, oof, before I get to people's homes, and they've tried many trainers before. I've seen this thousands of times. No, because we tell them, leave it, we did that, the trainer told us. But here's what happened. A piece of food fell somewhere in the house. And we were walking by not knowing something fell. We didn't know that he was there. And because he was trying to eat the stuff off the floor, we walked by, all of a sudden came around the corner, walked by, and he bit us in the leg or he bit the child. Right? Because you weren't ready to go, leave it, leave it. Right? You, did, you, <laughs> you cannot put these things on cue. It's a dangerous game. And then sitting to the bed makes no sense right? Because you got to make sure it's cured. You're not sending away to band-aid the problem. Because again, in life, life happens. <laughs> and it always happens in the house. Even as adults, we drop stuff by accident. We don't know we drop. The dog comes up like a scavenger. And if they have possession aggression, food aggression, somebody's going to get hurt. If you didn't say, leave it, ah, ah, no, it. right? So, my philosophy is everything that drops in the house, you correct with collar, don't say anything, and make it the action 
of grabbing any food that's on the floor in the house a no-no. So now, if something falls off the counter, you, nobody has to be there to go, uh-uh, leave it. The dog knows if they go to eat anything that dropped, it's going to light up, and they won't touch anything without even a human presence around. Right? This is the way you do things, to make safe. So with the e-collars, the only way you can do this, because you've got to be hiding somewhere else, and when something falls off, or something's thrown, the dog's not where it came from, and all of a sudden he goes like this, we do our e-collar to make sure that they come off the food, but nobody went, leave it, uh-uh, no, don't, don't. Because to make safety, the dog, anything falls, we just tell them, leave everything alone except for what goes in your bowl, or if I give you a treat by hand. Nothing in the house that falls on the floor that you stumble across are you allowed to possess, guard, or be aggressive with. You let it go. You see it on the floor, you smell it, you walk away. Right? So everybody's safe. Because you're not always going to be there, and most of the time, you, nobody's going to be there to go, ah, ah, leave it. Right? Knowing that the dog found something on the floor. So we must make these things negative, okay, so that we are safe and we don't have to worry about cueing the dog. He just knows how to do it by himself. And if a child walks through the room, right, little children are not going to go leave it. They're not going to be aware. The parents aren't around. They're upstairs somewhere. They're across the house. They don't know something's dropped on the floor. We know that if the child walks through the kitchen, the dog is over there and there's food, the dog's not going to get aggressive or bite the child because the dog knows not to pick anything up off the floor that was not given to him. Okay, makes sense. So, that leave it, okay, leave it, okay, leave it, okay, not useful. Okay, so going to the bed, not useful at all. Makes no sense when you're trying to look at this in a real perspective right and just tells me the, that that outlook is very amateur it's it's not a lot of experience not being able to see outside of regular thinking <laughs> right you have to be aware of real life and how this is going to work in real life of what really happens in a household to make sure all your bases are covered that aggressive states and behaviors will never happen. Okay? And then we're good. But E collar is critical. No other way to do this. I get things done in a day or two, unlike any trainer or system in the world. I always show results. I always get a, I've done, poof. Thousands and thousands and thousands, and I could keep going with thousands of aggression cases in my career. And we get them, and some cases owners just got to make sure they're on their game after we get it fixed. Right? And then we'll be all fine. Okay? So, always result, result, result. Dog training, that's all we care. It's about the result. So, these trainers who are showing aggressive stuff on YouTube to take seriously and give any trainer credibility we need to see a final result in every single thing in case they're trying to show us unless it's a certain kind of example they're trying to show something right for us to take seriously and know you know what you're doing we need to see the end result always and I can show it over and over and over and over consistently and it always works. Or else I wouldn't do the method. I would always change and find the way that's going to make 100. But I have it down. 20 years, I've had a method down that always works. And there's aggression, the first one. And I'll have a few more coming probably over the next few days. So, till next time, Miami Dog Whisperer.